Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today I hope to do that with an interesting conversation from the afterlife from Princess Diana. Yes, I know, I know, I know. There's been current events here in the United States of America related to her daughter-in-law, Megan, and her son, Harry. So we're going to talk just briefly about that, but we're going to ask her about what it was like for her, you know, just getting married and coming into the royal family, etc. I'm curious about her perspective. I mean, I'm sure you are too. So grab a cup of tea if that's, that suits you, or like I'm having coffee right now in my Hope mug. However you want to arrive in this interview, you are welcome. If you are from the UK and you have different ways of expressing yourself in regards to Princess Diana, Lady Diana, tea, coffee, totally all welcome here. All right, completely all welcome here. I feel like I need to say that, you guys. I feel like all of a sudden, as if there wasn't enough division in the world right now, all of a sudden now it's like the US and the UK. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Like we used to be friends. What happened? What happened? We had a falling out or something. What happened? Come on, you guys. Let's just let's just all get along. That's kind of how I feel a little bit right now. Let's just let's just put that out there. So let's bring in. I'm gonna call her Princess Diana because that feels right. Almost using the title feels like kind of important actually in this particular interview. So let's just do that. All right. Come on in. <sighs> Thank you. Yes, it's nice to see. It's nice to see you as well. Yes. Okay. So I, I physically see her. She's always wearing blue and I wore my navy blue for you because I always feel like I need to wear blue to honor you. It just feels like a thing we've kind of been doing, you know, in the times that we've uh, had conversation together. I really have wanted to talk to you for several days because there was this big bombshell interview with Oprah Winfrey here in the United States with your son Harry and his wife Megan. And I know you and I have talked about that before about her coming into the family and, and you were very complimentary and you were very kind and very welcoming and, and spoke about how these two we're such a good match for each other. Do you, do you still feel that way given how things have kind of evolved recently with, with their leaving, I want to say they're leaving the castle kind of a thing, but with their leaving, you know, the UK and, and not being active in, in the royal family and like the day-to-day -day life and duty and all that kind of stuff. How do you, how do you, do you still feel that way about them together? I mean, how do you feel about this? Hmm. She said, you're quite right. You're quite, quite right to say they, referring to them as a, as a unit, as one. And I want to say as a couple, but she says like as a unit, like they are one. They are one now. They are indeed, they have indeed merged. They have become very much a, a beyond what you would consider just a family, but they are like a unit. They are a whole. She says unit, I say whole and couple, just so you guys be clear on that. So when you speak of one of them, you speak of the other. It's, it, they're very infused together and this is something that is to be expected to r recognize the need for individual privacy. She says privacy. I love how she speaks. Okay, I'm going to try really hard not to like impact her, try the dialect because I don't want to offend anybody and I'm bad at, I'm bad at <laughs> accents anyway when I'm channeling or otherwise, right? But she says privacy and she says, um, it's very much an intrusion and this seems far beyond the definition of what I had previous, previously experienced on earth, she says. 
you and I had spoken, she's saying previously, like Diana and I, we kind of had this conversation prior to this, like several days ago, right after that um, interview aired in the US. And it was like Monday when she and I were kind of connected and, and we had this conversation just briefly before how how much there's parallels between what happened, what um, Diana experienced as part of the royal family and what Megan is experiencing. And she says, there is a, a bit of difference. It's, it's much more cutthroat now than it ever has been before. It's much more public. And of course it would make sense that things would play out in a public arena, much to the dismay of the royals the institution of what the royal family represents to England is, is quite important. It is quite a part of history and it has been certainly a struggle in recent years to keep that contained within the, a desirable measure, that's what she's saying, within a desirable measure. The world has changed a great deal, and with that, more social media, more opportunity for being able to track public figures in in other parts of the world, in Europe and, and in United in the United States as well. There have been um, many issues with with um, celebrities, well known people, or the royals being. Not, it's not. It's gone much. Further than hounding, it is much more of a um, an intrusion and a, a deeper than a disruption. It is it is it virtually it is it is quite impossible to live any sort of a life when you have when you have children. It brings things much more to the forefront. It feels much more deeply personal than a title or role a part, a job that you, that you have. It, it, it is being part of the royal family. It is a job. It is a job that you are always on at work for. It is probably the best way, the best comparison is, is you are literally working 24 seven because you, everything that you do or do not do, say or do not say, how you, how you stand, how you gesture, um, nonverbal or facial expressions or the slightest difference in weight or posture can be uh, construed and turned into a huge blaze of, of, of rumor and unsubstantiated um, falsehoods that create such a, a flurry of of unwanted attention, and, and in most cases, it is negative. It is, there's very rarely a good piece of news or a bit of, of, of story written about the royals or like others, famous people or well-known influential people, because that doesn't make good stories, does it? That doesn't encourage or entice people to watch. There is definitely this, this addiction to the the gossip we used to call it gossip and now you use the term drama and it is enhanced by the internet and by access and through social media it has made it much more difficult to get away or find just even pockets of 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 time that is your own even in the midst of of a public life Everyone needs that. There has to be a way to maintain your sanity, as, as you saw. I believe that Harry and Meghan, I believe they perhaps felt as though they could step back while still being part of the royal family, being taking part in the duties and, and being involved in ceremony and rituals and, and things of the sort that would be requested of them while still living in, in, in England and still being part of, but yet having some type of a separation because Harry has this 
desire to be his own person. And, and you have all seen that as he has grown up to be a very wonderful man. And he has this part of him that he cannot be, be contained or, um, I want to use the word tamed, you guys. He can't be tamed. I want to use that word really bad. She's not using that word, but I want to use the word, you can't tame Harry, okay? He definitely has is high is is spirited and has his own uh, dreams for his life and and very much wants to strike a balance between that and his family. His family means a great deal to him, and this I know, I know this. He has a very gentle heart, a very generous heart, and and a heart of service. So it does make a great deal of sense if you think about it from his perspective that he would want to be with the woman he loves and have a family and some degree of privacy while at the same time also being in service and fulfilling his 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 roles and duties as part of a family that is bigger than than his his little family that is the royal family and the royal family belongs very much to everyone and there is certainly a degree of ownership that cannot be really understood until you are inside of that place of ownership and having having this incredible feeling of your life not being your own is something that I cannot describe in words it's it's a it's a feeling of complete and utter dismay at first you just can't believe I mean from my perspective, so this is this is Diana talking, you guys. This is Princess Diana. She's just very talking all about. I'm not even asking her anything now. She's just talking all about it. She's now moving into telling us about her experiences um, being married into the royal family and from the inside of the castle. That's all I'm going to say. It the palace, the palace inside of the palace. It's dismay. You don't you don't want to believe that the the levity or severity of what is being told to you it, it feels a bit of a scare tactic a fear a fear tactic and to to make sure you toe the line and follow policy and protocol and and really fulfill the duties and i was ready i thought i was ready for that yet very naive to just how real it the ownership was it's it's as though you are signing over your life. You truly are. It it really that is not an exaggeration. That is truth. That is the way it felt to me. The complete loss of of individual identity and emerging into this royal family where you become the wife of and or the princess who is the wife of who will eventually be queen. Very much different standards for, by the way, for those who are in the role. So William and Kate have much different pressures and expectations than Harry and Meghan would. And so there, do you see it would make sense for, will, or for my children to have very different understanding perspective of, of their own individual lives, although they are brothers and raised in the same family by the same parent. Uh, it would make sense, though, that they would have very different expectations for their, for their life experience. And it is true. So you see, it makes a great deal of sense to me that Harry would believe that he could step away, have some sort of a normal family life while at the same time fulfilling his desire for service and honoring the royal family. He did not want to leave. He did not want to have to choose between his family that he is creating, where he is the father, and the family that he belongs to as far as his legacy. I'm asking, so right in my head, I'm asking her, does it feel like he does it feel like he is he feeling like any kind of guilt or betrayal of you for leaving the royal family for leaving william and 
his father, you know, Charles as well. Uh, you, can you speak on that or is that kind of per, a personal thing? Because you're the mom and I'm a mom too and I have boys, I have kids, I have three boys and a girl. And so I know that there's some different dynamics there between my children and so, and different expectations a bit, you know, and So as a mom, I know I'm involved, okay? So that's what I'm saying. Is it okay for me to ask that? Because I don't want to get all gossipy either. I want to be respectful too. No, she says, no, it, it's all right. It's all right to ask. My sons are, and she says, first of all, first off, first of all, first something first. I am very proud of both of my, my boys, both of my sons. She doesn't say boys, my sons, both of my sons. I'm very proud of both of them. They are their own, <clears throat> they have chosen their own paths. That's what she says, she, it's really clear. All of a sudden we redirected that, did you see that? They have chosen their own paths, okay. Okay, so as the mom, I'm feeling like because you, well, you left the palace. Did that make it easier for Harry to leave the palace? That's what I'm wondering, or the royal family. It's, it's, it's a great deal difference for him. It's a great deal difference. He is directly in the family. I simply married him. He is blood. It is a great deal harder, more difficult for Harry than he would have liked to have believed it to be, I think he perhaps had this false she says falsehood it's interesting she uses the falsehood of seeing me leave or seeing me change my life and knowing that if i did it he could do it but it wasn't that dramatic it wasn't that big of a he, he wasn't having a tantrum stomping his feet i'm not getting my way it's nothing like that it's this complete misunderstanding of what he thought he would be able to have versus what reality was for him, even though he is not even second in line for the throne. He is much more um, further out from that direct duty or responsibility than his brother. But at the same time, there is this expectation that the two of them would stay together or be in this experience together, fulfill this history together. and. I believe it would make a great deal of sense for them to have some sort of, of a, um, okay, I want to say disconnect, but she is not using that word, a distance between them. She says a distancing between them because of this experience. Harry, of course, it is expected. Will knows Harry. William knows Harry. She says, Will knows Harry quite well and would expect his brother to do something like this, to say, no, draw the line in the sand, this is what I want, this is the way it's going to be, and then have some negotiation. Will would expect that, she says. And on the other hand, Harry would also expect Will to understand that because he isn't the next in line for the throne, et cetera, et cetera. He doesn't have the same kind of obligations that Will has. And because of that, there is a bit of a, a friction, not between the brothers, not between them, but because of the monarchy itself and the structure of the monarchy itself, there is, there is a bit of a, a pressure there. So there is a need for distance indeed for them to be able to grow a bit and become more of their own, mm, she doesn't say more of their own person. It's like they're both fathers. She keeps bringing this forward like they're both leaders. They're both heads of their own families. And for Harry, that looks very different than it does for William because he's going to be the head of a family that is the figure head family of the country. And Harry is not going to be that ever. That is not going to be his, that is not his destiny. He does not have to plan for it and prepare for it and live his entire life for it, but William does. And so because of that, there is a difference between them. And they both growing up understood eventually this was going to be the case. And yet at the same time, it's very painful for both of them to know that there is this separation. And 
the tabloids and things, the, the medias are not being kind during this time. They are not, they are going to, to amplify, like, no, she says, like, blow it out of proportion. She, they are going to exploit, that's the word. That is exactly the word that fits the energy. She's like, they're going to exploit. The media will exploit this. And I, I promise you, it is not as dire as it appears to be right now. The boys over the years, she's making me feel like they've had, you know, they have completely different personalities, but they're still brothers. Like they're still brothers and there's that bond between them. And they may go some time without speaking and they may have rifts between them, she says, but they're not, they, they love each other and they will always love each other. That's what she's saying. Now oh, that makes sense. So, okay, so your, can you talk a little bit about your experience behind the palace walls when you married into this family? You talked about being a little vulnerable that people tried to tell you and then you felt very much felt like this was like an ownership or that you literally signed your life over to other people. It was very lonely, she says, very lonely. And she says, it was only when I had my children that I began to realize just how important it would be to give them a life where they could have their own experiences. They could have their own opportunities to, to grow into the men that they have become today because of those experiences. I was going to ask you about having other children. Did you have other children? She's talking about it's interesting because like it's very taboo. I even I, I heard this about um, Megan, how Megan talked about pregnancy and talked about miscarriage, her miscarriage just recently and such. And and how that was definitely a no, you don't talk about that, you don't even talk about that you're pregnant, that kind of a thing. And now it's it's a little bit different, but it's still very, there's like these very outdated, archaic rules, let me just say that, okay. Um, because I feel like there should be a girl, I feel like there should be a girl, I feel like there should be a girl, I feel like there should be two boys and a girl, like another baby. Um, I don't know if I said that in another interview with you or not, but it's possible that there was a miscarriage. Now, I know that we talked about Megan having difficulty in having a miscarriage, and that already happened, and we talked about that a couple of years ago when they got married. So we knew that was kind of going to happen, but it feels like you have more in common than just, it's very, and she said, it's not just isolating, it's lonely. It's lonely. You are alone. There is no one by your side. There isn't anyone really to cry to or to to help you you are you just have to 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 um she's like figure it out you just have to deal with it I mean, what else is there to do it's incredibly lonely and very very depressing it's very depressing it's very difficult even she said and I, i'm like i'm so my brain i'm going so even with harry as a husband oh so supportive, isn't he? He he really is like that. He really is like that. He will give his all to you. He's very loyal and very devoted. And you can see that, that I, I believe that comes through. And he's very passionate, very driven, and would certainly choose love over, over just about anything else, In, including family is what it feels like, including the palace, including his brother, including that, you know, it, it weighs very heavily on him. It weighs very heavy on his heart. She's showing me like his heart is very heavy because of this. And, and mostly it's because he feels hurt because he really didn't expect it to be that bad. And shocking, really, she says shocking, really shocking for, for, for him and she says, once you have children, everything's different. Everything changes. And my boys um, were everything to me. They were everything. And giving them the experiences that I could give them through travel, through understanding different cultures, through 
seeing the world through other people's eyes, to, to be compassionate it was very important for me to give them that experience, those experiences. And I believe they've had them. They've had them very, very much, very much. And that's the similarity. Like you guys, I can see that because she's showing me then as soon as Harry had a child, as soon as Megan was pregnant, everything changed for Megan because then all of a sudden she had this very much maternal instinct kicking in saying, no, this is how I'm going to raise my children. This is how it's going to be. And when people were telling her other things, even if, regardless of how explosive or volatile what they said was, even, even if you take out any of the context, just feeling the pressure that was on her, as soon as she had a child, there's this huge maternal instinct that just kicks in. You do whatever you can to protect your child. And that's kind of the energy that Diana is showing that I understand that feeling. I understand that. And not only did she have it, but Harry had it too. And it was this instant like bond, like, the three of them were this unit and they were not, nobody was going to hurt them. And he tried through traditional and some non-traditional channels to help to correct the situation and it did not get better, not quick enough for him. And now he is impatient, I will say. He does not have as much patience as perhaps others might, <laughs> but it's quite understandable. It's quite understandable. And I, under I understand. She says, I can relate to that feeling. And, and, but she's saying, oh gosh, this is so sad. But she's saying nobody was on my side. I didn't have someone like Harry, she's saying. Now that's not to compare both the boys. She's being very, very clear. She's not comparing William and Harry, she's comparing Harry to his father and her marriage versus his marriage. Very different scenario. Harry supports Meghan and thus she had a different, and it's a different time. Like she's saying, it's a totally different time. It's a completely different world right now. Women are so much more empower, empowered than they had been previously, even with a queen that is leading the country and the queen that has been very progressive in her lifetime, very progressive in her lifetime, open-minded in many a ways, much different than others. And she's even, even Princess Diana is saying, I don't have issue with the queen. It's the structure, the system, which is indeed where things issues like racism would live and, and be held in. Unless you can change the system, you can't eliminate or take out those other characteristics of such systems. You can't. You can't do it without restructuring, without overhauling, without sweeping change. And there is no way that that can happen overnight. It takes a great deal of time. It takes a great, great deal of cooperation. It quite, takes a great deal of, of mutual intent to create such a change. Now, do I believe it's possible? Yes, I do. And this might be something that just simply lays the groundwork. You might look back on this 20 years from now and say, if this hadn't have happened, neither would have this happened. So because of that, yes, I think it's very progressive. I think it's quite possible that years from now, it'll be easier to look back on this time and understand the need for it, the necessity, and what actually occurred because of it. Regardless of, of she says, regardless of, you, she says, I understand the, the feeling of the sides of things, the US, the UK, she says, the, the, the Harry, the William, they grew up with that. They grew up understanding that they were different. And so it would make sense that people would identify with one or the other, just like with their wives, you would identify with one or the other. But it doesn't mean love or hate. I can only choose one, she said. It's not like that. It doesn't have to be like that. That is a game that the media plays. That is a game that that the the 
um, those who rely upon the discontent, the discord, the, the struggles, the, the, the arguments, the fighting that thrive on that, that make money off that, they want that. Don't give it to them because then they win. People who hate then win. I, I believe that this is change. I believe, and change is hard, it's difficult. And it is for both of them, both of my sons. And she says, now she's saying the boys. <laughs> it's difficult for both the boys. But it's not because they're, one is a good person, one is a bad person, one is on this side, one is on that side. And to be very clear, William did not claim sides. He maybe, perhaps he feels a bit, um, well, she, like she shows me, he feels sad. He does feel sad. And, and so does Harry. They both are sad about the situation. They're both very sad. But it's not because one is better than the other or because one, is, one has these views and one has these views. No, they share some common values. They share common values and would not say anything overtly hurtful or intentionally hurt the other. They would not do that. That is simply not true. That's not true. So we, we will clear that up now. Okay. I know what that was about. Do you? Mm -hmm. Me too. Well, I have hope, Princess Diana. I have hope for your, your children, your boys. They'll find their way back to each other, don't you think? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. She's saying, can we speak about how this is influenced by grief? Absolutely. Yes, we can absolutely speak about that. How, what do you want to say about that? I know that there are many parallels between my situation and the media's influence, she says, over the circumstances surrounding my death cannot be denied. That's quite, quite evident. It would make sense that Harry would have some of these fears for his own wife, the mother of his child children. And it would make sense that then he would do what he needed to do to protect them. That would make a great deal of sense. So yes, there are parallels, yes. And do I believe that he's acting upon fear or anger about the past? I would think that anyone's personal experiences would of course influence their decision making. Yes. As far as speaking to his motivations or the depth of how much my death influenced him, I can't say that is for him to work through, but I can tell you that grief is a very powerful, powerful experience. And I know because, oh gosh, you guys, this is so sad. She's like making me feel like she grieved her own life after she got married to Charles, like she grieved her life, the life she could have had in other circumstances, in a different marriage, in a different experience, that she grieves the loss of her own life. Not her death, but the loss of her individualism in her life, that at some point in her life, then she reclaimed and, and began to get back and find herself again, you know, just as she was finding herself again, a more fulfilling version of life. Then she was killed. So of course it would make sense for Harry to feel very worried and have some connection between his own personal grief process. This is me saying this, not her, his own personal grief process and from the loss of his mother and seeing his wife, the mother of his children, being potentially put into that kind of a situation is very compelling. That's, that's a major motivation I could see. Grief can do that for sure, certainly, certainly. And I can, so I can see emotions like fear and anger and distrust coming up 
And this is not something he, they just randomly decided to do or he just randomly off the cuff just decided to go. He, she wants to make it very clear that he's worked on things behind the scenes over and over and over again. And he knew based upon his past experience living in and trying to be separate from the monarchy and having some kind of your own life, but at the same time being loyal and honorable to your family, very difficult to maintain both of those pieces. And you feel like separate people. And she says, his own personal experience showed him that it would only they would only be able to change so much very slowly, very gently, very softly. And in his mind, he's like, I don't have time for that anymore. I'm not gonna wait for 10 years until my children are older or until, you know, his wife could leave him, you guys. And while some people might want that, that is not what he wants at all. But she can't like, uh, she can't live in a cage. And in many ways, it feels like Harry married his mother, for sure. Mm -hmm. So is he trying to save his mother by being married to Megan and doing this? Maybe, you guys. I'm not a psychologist. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a psychiatrist or psychologist or whatever, but it sure feels like there's a lot more to this than just a few very intense volatile issues, okay, than, than just one experience or one event. It's, it's constant, constant, and wearing both of them down. Not just her, like she's not the problem. She might be a catalyst because of who she is, American and and African American, a black woman. I mean, it's not, there's not, there's no way getting around that, okay? There's no way getting around the challenges to the hierarchy and the structure and the traditional stuff. The, there's no way getting around this obviousness, right? And so, but there's this, it's time for some change. And Harry is very not, very much not patient and not gonna wait around. And, and the people in England, okay, the British people should know him by now, right? They should know him. They should know, they should have, ex they should expect it, you know? If it wasn't for Megan, it would have been somebody else. He would still make similar choices. You have to understand that. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to, but that's part of the thing. There's a pattern that was set up here and he is fulfilling and he's living it out. It's not, he would have sooner or later had some kind of a break from the monarchy, from the royal family. Whether or not he married Megan or somebody else, it would have eventually happened. It might not have happened this way. It might not have had to do with the topic of racism. It might not have had to do with the fact that um, his wife was an activist and all of a sudden didn't have a voice or that she was American. It might not have had to do with those exact things, but it, he would have, he would have then been the lightning, the lightning rod for all the things. He would have been the catalyst, obviously pointing to this, would, it would have happened for him. So this was a, inevitable is how it feels to me. And like she says too, she's very proud of both of her children and there really isn't this huge rift between them. Right now they're both hurt and they're, it's playing out in public and the truth is, is they've had issues with each other before, before all this because they're just very different people and they have very different roles and they have very different pressures and expectations and so it would make sense that they have very different lives. Yes. So this wasn't a dig, he's not, he's, he's, it's very specific that it wasn't a dig. Harry wasn't digging on his brother. That was not, his brother was just like the, I don't even know how to describe it, but he, he wasn't the target. Let's just say it that way. Okay. He wasn't the target. All right, wow, this is kind of a volatile one. Yeah, I wish I had, I wish I could end on a happy note. Just like the heart, just, just feel into the heart, feel into your heart and be compassionate for yourself and recognize that when people you know are having disagreements or disputes with one another and you love both of them, it's not about right or wrong. It's not clear cut like that. It's not about that at all. It's about their relationship. There's no sides here. It's just about being compassionate. She's like, it's at heart. What's at heart here? What's at heart? 
That's what, that's what she's ending with here, you guys. So let's take a nice breath into her heart. Big exhale out. No sides. Mm -mm. No sides. No pressure, you guys. No pressure. So this is Bridget coming to you from the United States of America, channeling Princess Diana, because that's what I call her, and hoping that you have found this informative, insightful, perhaps. I hope it's inspired you a bit to maybe understand life circumstances a little bit differently. Like look at things from different points of view instead of a one side versus the other side and kind of find a, a way to, to be softer, maybe more compassionate just in general. When you, when you see things like this, there's two sides to every story. Well, there's multiple sides, not just two. There's many, <laughs> many perspectives, right? Thank you for being here. I appreciate you very much. I do. She says, it's always lovely. It's always lovely to chat with you. It's always lovely to have a real conversation. <laughs> she says, you're welcome. Anytime, anytime. There's lots of things we could be talking about, so we should talk again. You know, I, I enjoy talking with you. And so do the viewers here on Above Life Channel. Hey, before you leave, make sure you subscribe to Above Life Channel so you never miss a new channeling video. We channel Afterlife Celebrity Gets just about every week over here. So make sure you subscribe and then ring that bell to be sure that you get notifications as well when there's new content or material up. If you're looking for me, Bridget, and you want to know me more besides my work as a psychic and medium and a channel, I'm also an intuitive life coach and I share my my experiences about my psychic life and just real life being intuitive on my channel where I vlog Fairy Grasshopper on YouTube. That's Fairy Grasshopper, my vlogging channel and other things intuitive on YouTube. Thanks for watching.